What's up everybody, this is Lynch World, and in celebration of the new upcoming film Stoker, I'm going to talk about one of the best modern directors, Park Chan-wook. He makes fantastic films. If you have not seen any of his films, I strongly suggest that you go out and get them, obtain them in any way possible. And the main movies I'm talking about are the Vengeance Trilogy, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, Old Boy, Lady Vengeance, not to mention his romance, um, I'm a Cyborg but That's Okay, and his vampire film, uh, Thirst. I mean, Park Chan Wook keeps uh, raising the bar for himself for every film he releases, so I'm really curious on how Stoker is going to play out, especially since it's his first um, uh, American film. And with his style, it's really going to be interesting to see how it affects um, the Hollywood scene. I'm really curious to see how that's going to play out. But regardless, um, regarding Park Chan Wook, and like, the, like I just said not too long ago, I'm going to be talking about his five films, the films from him that I've only seen. Um, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, Old Boy, Lady Vengeance, Thirst, and I'm a Cyborg, but that's okay. I am aware that he does have other films, but I just simply have not seen them yet. So um, whenever I get to them, I will possibly come back and talk about them. But for now, let's stick with the main five that make him who he is. So his first film, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, in my opinion, is the first movie that put him on the map, that started the path to success for him. And out of the whole entire Vengeance trilogy, my favorite is Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance. I mean, a lot of people prefer Old Boy, and don't get me wrong, I love Old Boy as much as the next person, and I, I really, really do like uh, Lady Vengeance, but Mr. Vengeance just does it for me. I like the I like the fact that it's a much darker movie. It's the darkest in the whole entire trilogy. Not only that, but it's much grittier too. I really, really like that. But um, aside from that, Mr. Vengeance, the story follows a man named Ryu, and he is deaf and dumb. <laughs> and basically, he lives with his sister who's dying because of a failing kidney. She needs a kidney transplant, but because of her rare blood type, they're having trouble finding one. So Ryu gets fired from his job, and because of that, he becomes so desperate that he goes into the uh, black market, and he... Um, he pays these uh, criminals to get a kidney for him, but in order to, but but at the same time he has to give them a kidney of his own. So they go through all that, but unfortunately he gets ripped off. They set off with his money and his kidney, and they leave him with nothing. So incredibly desperate at that point, he decides to turn to his girlfriend, who is played by the maze, the amazing and wonderful Duna Bay. And if you have no idea who she is, she is she was just recently in the movie um, Cloud Atlas. Um, look her up. Um, he turns to his girlfriend, who is part of a terrorist organization, kind of, and they develop a plan to kidnap his, um, his employer's daughter. And at that point, shit just hits the fan, and it just continues to go downhill as they continue to uh, do what they think is right, which only screws them over more, more and more and more until... Everything is just fucked up completely, and I really like that. I re it, 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 it's one of the few revenge movies. What, what I really like about it is the fact that it's one of the few revenge movies where the main characters. It's not your typical good guy or bad guy setup. You know, the bad guy did something to the good guy. The good guy gets angry and he wants revenge. No, what this movie does is that it sets up the basis of two men in desperate situations. They're not evil men. They don't set out to hurt anybody, but they're doing what they can to survive. They're trying to save uh, the people they love. They don't want to hurt the people they love, but in order to successfully get through their struggle, they're going to have to pull a few strings. They're going to have to do some dirty work. They're going to have to get dirty. And that's what I really like about that. Not a lot of Vengeance movies explore that, but Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance did. And that's what I really, really like about that. Not only is this my favorite of the uh, trilogy, and not only is this one of my favorite films of all time, it's my absolute number one favorite Korean film of all time. All right, it's just a, it's a bloody f uh, fantastic film. I completely recommend it. It's also, um, I think I'm, I, th I think I should also point this out. It's also the more slower paced of the trilogy. Um, it's really long too. It's over two hours. It's it, the the pacing is natural, and that's what I really like about that. It's not stylized. It doesn't really do too much to to rush to the end to see how it concludes. It takes its time. You you're slowly going through this journey with Ryu and um his employer, whose name is uh, Mr. Park. You you're, you're slowly going through this journey to see them just fuck up and just drown in this miserable uh, uh this miserable. 
um, ocean of vengeance and misery, and it's it's just depressing to watch, but it's an incredibly good film. I recommend it. Next movie is Old Boy, and if there's and if there's one movie that if there's one foreign movie that a lot of people know, I'd say Old Boy is one of them. Old Boy is in the top. Um, a lot of people love Old Boy. A lot of people consider it one of the greatest movies ever made. A lot of people say it has one of the best choreographed fight scenes ever made, which I highly agree with. And it's an amazing film. Well made. Uh, great performances from, um, God, I can't remember his name. Uh, Oh, I can't remember his name. He he's on, he's on he he was also in I Saw the Devil. He was also in another Korean film called Happy End. He was in a lot of movies. He's pretty famous in Korea. I can't remember his name. But great performances from him and the uh, the supporting actress. That's an entirely great film. Um, I really don't have to explain the story since I'm pretty sure a lot of you know. But I'll just do it anyway. Just for those who do not know, Old Boy is about a man who is locked up in prison not necessarily a prison it's more like a hotel room but in short it's a prison for 15 straight years no explanation why he's just stuck in this confined room for 15 years no explanation and even worse every time he gets to the point where he wants to kill himself because he can no longer take it anymore um, these mysterious people they come in they take him out and they revive him and they put him back in the room so basically he has no way to escape at all he is just put th through pure torture but 15 years later he's released with absolutely no explanation what what whatsoever he it, it's just it, he he's set back out into this world that has just developed over the years and he's just missed out on a lot he just he, he's an alien basically and at that point on he has he has 5 days to figure out what the hell happened that earned him this uh one way ticket into f a 15 year imprisonment and you know who was behind it that's pretty much all i'll say if you have not seen it i will not say anything else go watch it asap interesting enough this movie was based on a japanese manga um of the same name i'm not too sure if it was and apparently for those of you who have seen the movie apparently the manga the climax of the manga is nothing even remotely close to the ending of the movie i read about the ending of the manga and in my opinion, I, it's one of those rare situations where I think the movie is actually uh, better than the original source, kind of like The Shining. But regardless of that, it's a um, it's an it's an incredible movie. It's just it's it's well made. I, there's really nothing else I can say about this movie. What I will go on about is the fight scene. Now, if there's one thing that people do talk about, old boy. And if they're not talking about the twist, they are talking about the fight scene. And this fight scene is fucking incredible, people. Why is it incredible? Well, this is why it's incredible. The fact that the main character only has a hammer and he's going against like 10 to 15 guys in this small in this small hallway. It's it's completely it's a straight linear hallway. There's no, you know, there's no uh, other hallways branching off of it. No, it's just a one straight shot. And he's going against all of these guys. And the fact that it's so realistic and well choreographed that it's just... It, it, and it's in one continuous take, too. That's what I really like about it. There are no cutaways. It's in one fresh take. It was really an, an ambitious fight scene. Talking about it really is not going to do this scene any justice. You have to watch this scene for yourself. And no, I don't mean go on YouTube and search it up and watch it. Um, if you want to, go ahead. But I mean, if you haven't seen the movie, watch the movie in one natural, um, in just one viewing. And then let the fight scene come up and take you by surprise. Trust me, it will be much more uh, rewarding. Now, to, now, time to touch upon the more infamous or famous, however you want to call it, aspect of the film, the twist. I'm not going to give the twist away. But a lot of people, the twist, it's not the most original thing. I'm not, it's not something that's done in a lot of films, but it's not the very first film to do it. I've seen another film that had the exact same twist. But what makes this twist incredibly powerful is how is the build up to it and how you just do not completely see it coming. That's just 
the driving point of the twist, and I fucking love it so much. I really don't know what else I can say about Old Boy. Even though I'm giving it this much praise, I, I really don't like it as much as Mr. Vengeance. Mr. Vengeance is just overall the darker and grittier of the two, which is why I like it more. But Old Boy, that does that does not make Old Boy any less. It's not as dark as Mr. Vengeance, but it's a great Vengeance movie, and I recommend it. That's all I can say. And before I go over to the next movie, I think it's fair if I make a mention of the upcoming remake of Old Boy and the Indian remake of Old Boy, which is known as Zinda. Let me start off by saying that Zinda is not a good film. It's pretty bad. It's very shitty. Um, it's very weak. <laughs> Um, the, the director did not really go into this movie with any heart or soul. He just, it was just a literal shot for shot remake. And not to mention that even for a shot for shot remake, I really don't understand how you can make the fight scene lame. The fight scene in Zenda is incredibly lame. Um, and for some reason, the director decided to film the whole entire film with an annoying blue tint. I really don't know why, but it's a shitty movie. If you want a comedy, then go for it but regarding the upcoming uh, remake of Zinda uh, excuse me of old boy I I'm not, I touched upon it in my Django video I'm not expecting a, a, a good movie I mean it, it could be uh, decent but I'm not expecting it to beat uh, the original old boy it's not going to the movie is going to be directed by Spike Lee and that says something I mean Spike Lee he has a few good films under his belt but with the man that he is now, I'm not really holding out too high expectations for this upcoming remake. I mean, I'm, and plus, not to mention that this is Hollywood we're talking about here. Hollywood, when when it comes to remakes, Hollywood is just uh, Hollywood is on them like leeches, man. It, it's it's just for the money. I always ask if 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 Hollywood really appreciates this movie, why don't they just take the movie and re-release them in the states? But no, that's not the case. They just want the cash because these are. Um, not only are these popular movies in other countries, but they, they're just out of ideas, so. Oh well. Moving on to the next movie. Sympathy for Lady Vengeance, and if there's any movie in the trilogy that I like the least, it, it would probably be this one. That's not to say that it's a bad movie. Um, Lady Vengeance, it's a 8 out of 10 for me, whereas the previous two films are 10 out of 10s. But there's just something with this film that I just couldn't really attach to compared to the last ones. I mean, I really do appreciate the fact that Park Chan-wook took a totally different approach with this one. Um, he took a more artistic and beautiful and a lighter approach to this one in comparison to the last two. I mean, the first one was just an ugly, grim movie, and the second one was more of a uh, psychological mindfuck. But this one, it's more artistic. It's more lighthearted in a sense, kind of, more so than the last two. But I appreciate this new approach he did. But at the same time, as much as I could con I could relate to the main character, there's something about her that I just really couldn't click with in comparison to Ryu from Mr. Vengeance or Odesu from Old Boy. Um, Lady Vengeance, um, to talk about, um, regarding the movie story, Lady Vengeance is about a woman. And I can't remember her name, I'm sorry. And this woman works for this man. And by the way, the main character in Old Boy also plays the main villain in Mr. Vengeance, uh, Lady Vengeance. But anyway, she works for this man, and basically he kills children. And there's one point, and at one point, um, um, every, uh, she, she has to take the rep for him, um, you know, they they discover that uh, a child's been killed, and she's the one who has to cover up for him, and she's sent to prison because of it. But in the mix of all this, she was pregnant, and she had a daughter. But because she went to prison, her daughter was given away to uh, foster care, and she has she now resides in another country, Australia. So basically, what the the movie follows is that this woman tries to reconnect with her long lost daughter while getting revenge on the man who killed these children and atoning for herself due to the fact that she helped him uh, get these children anyway. I'm sorry if that uh, description was not spot on for other people who have seen the movie. It's been a really long time since I've seen Lady Vengeance. I've only seen it like twice or three times in compar- no, not three times, twice in comparison to Old Boy and Mr. Vengeance where I watched endlessly on a almost a daily basis at one point in time but you know it's a it's a, it's, a, it's an interesting movie i really do recommend it there are people who preferred this one compared to the first and second one 
uh, mainly because of the way how Park Chan Wook handles revenge this time. It's not this time around. It's not necessarily like a um, survival kind of story, like the first Vengeance movie, and it's not an eye for an eye kind of vengeance style like the second movie. This time, this woman is using her power to make everything right, as right as possible. She's not doing it just for herself. She's also doing it for the parents uh, of these uh, of the murdered children. She gets them involved with the um, planning. And the thing is, it's, it's the way how it just... It, it's a very emotional film. You can feel the... It's, it's not a movie where you watch the revenge happen and you're like, fuck yeah, man, he had it coming. It's a movie where you... It's, it's a kind of revenge where you watch and it's kind of like... You, you, you view it with your emotions. You can feel how angry these people are with this man, how he just murdered the, their, uh, their children. And it's a very emotional film. Um, eight out of ten, good movie. I recommend it. It's just not really my favorite, but oh well, moving on. Next movie is I'm a Cyborg, but that's okay. Now, this is a very, very interesting film. It's a, uh, it's a rom-com, but it's probably one of the most offbeat rom-coms I've ever seen. It's definitely original. It's very different. Um, basically, what this movie is about and please bear with me, I've only seen this movie once and that was long ago, so if I get some information wrong, please feel free to correct me. But what the movie is about is that it follows a girl who's in a mental institution and she believes she's a cyborg. And because of that, she refuses to eat regular food. She thinks she needs to live off of a battery life or whatever. And there's a man there, and, you know, of course he's going to get the... There's another man in this institution, and of course he's going to get the hots for this girl. And basically, what the film kind of goes through... It, it, the, what the film is about is that it's about this man who helps this girl survive, rather than letting her starve herself to death. It, it, it It's... It's kind of hard to explain. Either that, or I just haven't seen it enough times, or I just can't remember it. It's a very offbeat film. Um, there's not really a clear storyline. It's more character-driven. And it's a, <laughs> it's a very, very, very um, uh, random movie. I wouldn't call it random, but... And this, not, this isn't a spoiler, by the way. I do remember one scene in particular where the girl was going through one of her... Um, you know, phases where she was literally, where she hallucinated that she was a cyborg, and at this point she uses the, the, the these guns that come out of her fingers, and she just starts shooting up the entire institution, and it, it was just, it was an interesting film, um, is it my favorite, out of all that I've seen from Park Chan-wook, this is probably my least favorite, um, I'll give it a 7 out of 10, it's a, it's a, it's kind of a confusing movie. It's a movie where you have to pay attention because it's not really, you know, there's really no story to follow. It's just character driven. Do I recommend this movie? Yeah, just mainly because it's a different movie and it's um, it's enjoyable, but um, it's just not my favorite. And there's really nothing else I can say about it since it's been so long since I've watched it. But I do remember enjoying it, and I do remember it having a very strange ending. Um. But yeah, it's Chen, it's Park Chen Wook, so give it a go. And the last film of his I'm going to touch upon, and this is the uh, another film that I've seen of his. This is Thirst, his vampire film. Thirst is just an incredible movie. It's a refreshing vampire movie. Um, I watched this around the time when Twilight was at its peak, when fangirls were going insane for this movie, when the movie was getting insane amounts of coverage. And this is also around the time I saw Let the Right One In. That was a great vampire movie. But Thirst, it, it's incredibly well made. It's a great film. The movie is about a priest who goes through a series of medical experiments. And one day, the one of these experiments, they go wrong. And um, I th from what I remember, um, I don't know if he dies from one of them, but I know he becomes stricken with, um, he becomes a vampire pretty much as a result of one of the uh, medical experiences, experiments. And basically what's interesting is that, what's interesting about this movie is that this priest, he has to go against everything that he lived by and in order to um, live his life as a vampire and in order to uh, survive. Now, in the midst of all this, he meets this 
poor girl who's just beaten up, uh, you know, picked on by her family. Not necessarily beaten up, but she's just, you know, she just doesn't have the best life. And this girl is a track. This girl's attracted to him, and he gets involved with this girl. And um, yeah, his uh, vampirism comes into play, and things just go wrong from there. That's all I'll say about this movie. But um, this is also a really long movie too. It's over two hours. It has quite a bit to say. Um, it's a very refreshing vampire flick. It's it goes into the category of a vamp of a uh, vampire romance, technically. But it's not cheesy about it. It's not about sparkling vampires. I'm sorry, I had to take that shot at Twilight, but I just had to. Um, I saw this movie, like I said, I saw this movie around the time when Twilight was at its peak, so I couldn't help it. But regardless, um, Thirst is a 9 out of 10 for me. It's really been a long time since I've seen the movie, so I really gotta watch it again. I think I've seen it twice. Uh, in a in a spaced out period, but regardless, it's a great movie. It has a great story. the the way how the the way how it handles vampirism. It's 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 a what I love about the what I really like about the movie is the fact that it doesn't take itself too seriously. Like it is a dark movie, but there are moments where you know it's not just about them killing people and you know drinking blood and. Um, you know, anything of the sort. It's just about them kind of coming to terms with their powers, how he's kind, he's trying to keep it under control, whereas another victim, uh, kind of, you know, uses it to her, um, to her advantage for all the wrong reasons. But, um, <laughs> regardless, I recommend this movie all the way. It's a great movie. Um, Park Chan Wook is a great director. And as for Stoker, I'm really psyched for this movie. It's it looks really different. It looks incredible. It has that it has that style. It this if if you've seen Thirst, then you can tell that it you can tell Stoker has more of that Thirst style, more so in comparison to Old Boy and Lady Vengeance and Mr. Vengeance and whatnot. I'm really excited for it. I, I, I really don't know what to make of it because the movie, the, the trailer just looks so mysterious and that's what I like about it. But, um, yeah, once this movie hits the theaters, man, I am there day one. I cannot wait for Stoker. Um, I also can't wait for whatever else Park Chan Wook has coming out in the future. Um, I wish the man, you know, good luck with his career. And uh, this is has this has been a um, Lynch World video, so stay tuned for more videos.